All right, well, C.J. Moore, great writer. We've had C.J. on many times, great features on men's basketball, uh, not just in the Big 12, but throughout the country. He joins us today on 365 Sports. C.J., thanks for your time. So how many teams that were a part of the list of winners during the offseason, uh, a chunk out of the Big 12, including maybe Arizona, or who would that be? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Baylor obviously improved their, their situation. Um, Arizona improved their situation. Texas Tech um, got a big one this, this past week and, and looks better. And, um, you know, Iowa State, too, I think got some, some smart additions. So Kansas, obviously, um, has, has got some big-name guys in there. So, you know, up and down the Big 12, you've got you've – got, teams that are adding pieces that, that should help them and I think the league is going to be a, a giant again especially adding Arizona to the mix uh, one of those players who's leaving the Big 12 uh, with BYU and following his coach uh, Mark Pope to Kentucky is Jackson Robinson who um, waited until early this afternoon uh, to announce uh, his decision to go to Kentucky uh, how big of a move is that for the Wildcats and I know the other school uh, that was in on him was Kansas. Uh, what do yeah. they do uh, following that up? Well, I, I'm not really sure why Kansas is still recruiting dudes. Like, they've got plenty of guys. Uh, I think, you know, if you can get a six seven great shooter that has NBA potential, you you probably try to get him and if, if you've got a chance. So I understand why they were trying to, to, to grab him. But uh, at, this, at this point, you're just getting greedy. Like, I, I think they've got plenty on the perimeter um, with their current roster. And there really aren't any, you know, high-level guys out there left. I, I think you might see some schools late in the process, like even as late as August, like Kansas did a year ago, got Johnny Furphy, I think, in August. You could see some teams look overseas and try to buy some players overseas. We saw that with Illinois this week. Got a, a really good one. BYU got a good one. Um, so I think that's something that, that – it could become a norm in college basketball where you missed on, you know, maybe some portal guys and you've got to fill the roster, fill a starting spot late and you, you try to go buy a guy overseas. But um, as far as Jackson Robinson goes, you know, I think he's a, he's a guy that can, can really help Kentucky. And um, it, to me, their roster looked like a lot of complimentary guys, but not really a star. I think Jackson Robinson maybe qualifies in that star spot, but um, I think they still could use, you know, they're missing like some shot creators, but that you know Pope didn't really have a ton of shot creators this past year, and he still had a really good offense. So um, it makes sense, obviously, going and grabbing him with with his familiarity with Jackson. CJ uh, Texas Tech uh, was was busy in that second half of April, adding three players to the portal, and then a little bit of a of a drought as far as additions go until JT Toppin uh, pledged here this week. Uh, just how big of an addition was that for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders? Yeah, I, I think that was that was huge. I think he's one of the the best young big men that was in the portal. Um, a guy that could probably play the four or five. I'm sure they'll they'll start him at the four, um, and just you know, good offensive potential upside. Um, a guy that I know NBA people are keeping their eyes on, and you know he we could a year from now he could be a first round pick potentially, uh, maybe six around longer than that. But but he's a guy that. Um, I know the upside is, is thought to be pretty high. And, uh, you know, I wrote in my, in my piece today that the two, three, four combo for Texas Tech is about as good as anybody in the country because Darian Williams was, was playing awesome into last year. And then I really like Chance McMillan too. So um, I kind of like the, you know, that two, three, four combo for them. I think it's about as good as anybody's in the league. Uh, after what was uh, at least a little bit of like, uh-oh, what's going on with Scott Drew, Kentucky, et cetera, in the end they ended up with one heck of a nice spring, especially with his decision to remain at Baylor. Of the two mm -hmm. that are both alphas, Norshad O'Meara and Jeremy Roach, two different positions, two necessary pickups, which of those two might be more of the, uh, I guess, biggest push for them or the one that has the biggest impact for them? Oh, it's tough to say. I think they both, you know, could have a really big impact. Probably, you know, if, if there's going to be a one that's the leading scorer, I would guess Jeremy Roach would be that guy. Would be um, just based on how how Baylor has played the last few mm -hmm. years and their success with guards. Um, 
you know, he's, he's proven it, not just this past year, but for, for, for several years now, I'm, I'm sure that he'll thrive in that offense and, and, uh, you know, be a guy that averages anywhere from 16 to 18 points per game. How much did Mark Sears for a school or a program that was having a nice spring anyway, how much does his return even make Alabama better? Well, it gives them arguably the best guard in college basketball. I, I think he was one of the, you know, two or three best in college basketball last year. He just fits so well in that offense. He is such a good shooter and um, so good off the bounce and just, you know, just an incredible score. So um, they were already going to be pretty good and, and had a ton of shooting and a ton of playmakers on the team. But um, when you can go and get a guy that, you know, should be like a first team All-American to return, that's that's a, that's a pretty good bump. And um, I probably would have had him somewhere in the top ten if he didn't come back, but with, with him coming back, to me, that's that's the preseason number one team. CJ, how do you feel about the the temperature of Porter Moser's seat in Norman? It seems like there's a lot of just kind of consternation about just the results so far through these first three seasons. Um, entering next year, do you feel like uh, there's optimism to be found, or just kind of how do you view that whole situation? Well, uh, you know, I, I feel for Porter because, you know, a few years, I think his first season in the Big 12, I think they were the first team out of the NCAA tournament or close to it. They were one of the first two te- first teams out this year. So if you if they make the tournament, and th- if they win one or two more games in each of those seasons, you're looking at making the tournament two out of three years. And, and you know, there's, there's probably, you're, they're looking at it as totally different lens, right? Um, I do think there's probably some pressure there going into year four, haven't made a tournament yet, and having to reload. I mean, they lost, um, they were looking really – they were top 10 in the country at one point uh, this past season. You know, they're sitting there at like 15-3, and 13-1. They were looking really good. Um, and then to lose – you know, kind of struggle down the stretch and lose three guards, J.V. McCollum, Otigua, Iowa, and um, Miles Uzon. Like, those, that was the core of their team and could have had all three of those guys coming back, and, and they all leave. And John Hughley also leaves their, um, you know, center that played for quite a bit for them. So – um, it's, he's in a tough spot having to, to kind of rebuild the roster when it looked like he was he had a you know really good core for for a couple of years. CJ um, Coleman Hawkins uh, was probably the biggest name now uh, mm-hmm. that jumped into the portal. He uh, especially after you saw uh, you know what happened uh, up at Washington and how much uh, money is going for big men right yeah. now. Um, where do you think uh, his arrow will be pointed? Um, you know when the dollar figures come out. Uh, I mean, I think he's asking for two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Is, is the number I've heard. Um, I'm not sure that he gets that, but you you are in kind of like desperation season where there are some people that you know have maybe missed on a player or two and um, got money to spend and and you know are willing to, to throw it all on on one more guy. I don't know that anybody's got two million dollars left, um, but I would I would guess he's in the neighborhood of you know above a million maybe just based on what some other guys have gotten and, and the quality of player he is. Um, you know, one of the, I think we had him maybe fifth or so in our portal rankings. He was, he was right up there. Um, so I, I'm, I'm guessing he gets, you know, in the neighborhood of one to 1. 1.5 or something like that. Um, and if I had to guess where he ends up, it's probably Arkansas and some of that chicken money. <laughs> there you go. Maybe they got some of that chicken money left. Um, but I'm, I'm sure he'll, he'll, He's, he's not going to be hurting for cash this, this next season. CJ, one more name that's uh, familiar. He played at Baylor, Dane Danger, but then went to Illinois, Brad Underwood's trying to tweak what he does mm-hmm. there, and now he's at Memphis. Uh, how how important was it? And uh, a valuable piece, if you look at if he played full 40 minutes, but uh, what kind of player is he going to be for Memphis, in your opinion? Yeah, I think, he, you know, it depends how they play, kind of. Like, are they going to – be willing to throw it into the post and, and uh, you know, maybe not try to play like five out, spread it out like Illinois was trying to play this last year. But if they're willing to throw it in the post, I think he could put up really good numbers. And if he gets minutes, um, he was one of my, like Sam Bassini and I who, who do the rankings, we kind of went back and forth on, on him because I, I wanted it to put him higher than, 
and Sam was willing to go because I, I, I think pretty highly of him. Um, I know he's had some like motor issues and that kind of stuff, but when he's on the floor, he produces at a pretty high level and uh, really, really skilled, you know, great hands, great feet, great touch. Um, so I think he could be a guy that could be an all league guy in that league if he gets the minutes and the touches. Thank you for your time. Always great to have you, CJ, with your knowledge, great writing skills, and the features you do. Thank you very much. Have a great week. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. CJ Moore from TheAthletic.com does great feature writing. I mean, really, really good feature writing on uh, – it does a lot around the big.